Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And if you're interested in doing some 3D modeling, texturing, or animation, but you don't have any money, this is the perfect guide for you. Because what we're going to do is run through a number of 3D tools out there. And we're going to start off with the daddy of them all. Of course, that is Blender. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each one of these because I've covered almost every single one of them in more depth in the channel. So check out the linked article down below for links to videos on all of the topics we're talking about today. But Blender, uh, it is the big open source, do all, be all 3D applications out there. Chances are you probably know about about it. If not, head on over to blender.org, stop the video right now, and go and learn about it, and then come back and watch the rest of the video. If you find that you didn't like Blender, though, uh, you like the ID behind it, but not necessarily the user interface, B for Artist is a good option for you. Basically, this is Blender for artists. That's the entire idea behind it. Uh, they have redone the user interface. They kind of do their own take on it. Uh, Toolbar is kind of a different approach to things. Uh, and they stay pretty much up to date with the current version of Blender. So it is Blender with a usability facelift and better documentation, frankly. Uh, so if you find Blender too daunting or you don't like the user interface, do be sure to check out B for Artist. After that, we have something called Clavicula. Uh, now this may look kind of familiar because the artist behind it is the same guy who created a program called Neo Barack. I haven't actually looked at Clavicula, Clavicula yet. Uh, it is a modeling tool both on the desktop and in VR uh, for uh, major platforms, actually. The only one with VR, by the way, is Windows. I am going to do a follow-up video of hands-on with Clavicula clavicula and hopefully i can pronounce it by then uh in the future but it is kind of an interesting sculpting application out there that is free if you tried out neo Barack, which is one of the weirdest programs ever made you'll instantly understand what clavicula is all about next up we have dust 3d now the unfortunate thing about dust 3d is they don't do a really good job of selling what they do uh it is a very interesting rapid 3d modeling program it actually got an epic mega grant they just their website and their web presence is awful. I actually went with the GitHub page uh, because, quite frankly, this is their homepage. Uh, so, again, Dust 3D doesn't spend a lot of time on their marketing side of things, but it is a free sketch-based 3D modeler. It's a very interesting and unique way to model. Uh, do be sure to check out my video on Dust 3D. I may check it out and do an updated video in the near future. Next up, we have Rocket 3F. Now, this is a polygonal modeling tool. It is Windows only, so if you're on Linux or Mac, I'm sorry you're out of luck, except for possibly through Wine. Uh, this one is, again, just not enough people know about it. It's a great little tool. I did a feature video on it in the past. You can actually see that video uh, right here. Um, but it is fast, fun, and friendly. You can see from the UI the kind of stuff that it is capable of. It is, again, a hard surface polygonal modeling tool. Uh, there is a commercial version of it available, but the commercial version really is just for added features like the ability to customize it. Uh, if you're willing to use it just basically as it is out of the box, uh, it is a shockingly capable 3D polygonal modeling tool. So again, you're basically, if you're taking the box modeling approach, uh, that is kind of where 3F comes from. Uh, very hot key focus. You don't need a UI at all to interact with. So once you get to know it, uh, it is kind of a really interesting tool to work with. So if you do not like the modeling tools that are built into Blender, Rocket 3F is definitely one that you should check out. You even got sculpting tools built in. It is a, a cool application that not quite enough people know about. Uh, so Rocket 3F, do be sure to check that out if you are on the Windows platform. Uh, next up, we have this guy right here. Now you can't tell this is actually running in my browser. You can see if I go over here. You'll see this is called Sculpt GL. Uh, this is a browser-based sculpting application from the same guy that made the excellent Nomad Sculpt, which I am a big fan of. So it's kind of like a light version of uh, ZBrush. And it's it's capable. It's completely free. It runs entirely in the browser. It has good performance. And if you've ever used... Um, Oh, I just said the name. Uh, the Nomad Sculpt. You got an idea. This is the genesis of Nomad Sculpt. So you can see we're even dealing here with 100,000 faces and no issues at all. Obviously, you have a variety of different tools. So again, come here, we can do a crease tool. We can crease things in. Your traditional sculpting application. Uh, Sculpt GL is impressive. It's definitely one of those things you do uh, need to check out. Now, this runs entirely in your browser. So literally just head on over to the URL. Again, it will be in the linked article down below uh, to go ahead and check this one out. Now, next up, we have Magic of Voxel. Uh, Magic of Voxel is a voxel-based modeling, a voxel, think uh, Minecraft, you know, we're basically creating things out of virtual Lego blocks. You can create some incredibly cool images using uh, voxels, as you can see here from some of these demos right here. Magic of Voxel is probably the preeminent application in this space. Uh, and if you have never checked it out, I highly recommend doing so. It's a very cool application. I wish I could actually add this one as well. Um, 
Magica CSG or Constructive Solid Geometry. This is an SDF or Sign Distance Field based modeling tool. Uh, unfortunately, it is now only available for uh, Patreon beta users. So until this is released, it's not free. But I think when it is actually released, uh, it will be free. And this is a very, very cool tool with a lot of potential. But it doesn't fit in this video. So we're going to talk about Magic Voxel instead. And on the topic of voxels, there is an open source cross platform option out there as well Goxel. Now, this is open source for Windows. Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. Uh, you're not seeing too, too much of it, but it's another grid-based modeling application. There is actually a web version you can go ahead and check out right here. Uh, so if you're interested in voxel-based modeling, this is kind of the idea. You're basically building things out of virtual Lego blicks, and you stack them on top of each other, you paint them in different colors, and it's basically you're painting voxels or volumetric pixels. Basically, think of 3D pixels. Uh, Goxel is, again, available on major platforms uh, and free and open source. Uh, next up, we have Blockbench. This is a low-polygon 3D modeler. I do think it... It's, is it voxels or voxel lights? I covered this one in the past. I haven't used it in a while. I know it has export out to Minecraft, but I think you can actually do low polygon work with it as well. Another very interesting one to check out. You can run it in the web if you wish, and you can also go ahead and download it for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Again, it's low poly stuff, very low poly, um, but very simple to work with. So another one I check out. So low polygon 3D modeling, you got texturing tools built in, you can do animations directly in it, and it is free and open source. So that is Blockbench. Again, I did a video on this, so linked in the linked article, as I keep saying. Next up, we have Vectory. This is another browser based application. So this one's more for 3D designs. Uh, but you can run it directly in your browser um, and do product designs right there. It's um, more aimed at augmented reality and metaverse stuff. But if you want to go ahead and check it out, you can click it, click it right there and try it in your browser. I checked that one out. I think it was a couple of years ago. Now, this next one has a lot of potential, but I don't know if it's ever going to go anywhere. It's something called Plasticity. Uh, this is a 3D modeling application for designers, so basically concept artists. Uh, it's a very neat idea. They're taking like CAD-based principles, but making it for artists. They're using something called NURBS. NURBS used to be uh, was that non-uniform relational B-splines. That was the way that organic 3D modeling was done in like the late 90s, early aughts. Um, and it's uh, very cool. It's it's free for now. Uh, the code is LGPL. Eventually, it will cost money. Now, part that I'm a little scared of is there hasn't been a commit since September. So I do not know if this project is abandoned, but it, it has a lot of potential. It's an interesting concept. And I always liked modeling in NURBS. So I actually hope this one uh, comes back from the dead and takes off. Uh, next up, we have this guy right here. This is this is kind of it. This is like kind of one of the coolest programs ever. I don't know how useful it is, but it is just stupidly easy to use. Um, and again, this is running in my browser. So this is a program called, oh my God, it's it's locked up on me because I can't uh, use my keyboard. So see if I can actually get the details over here. So this is a program called Bloom. It's super, super simple. Uh, 3D modeling tool for doing things like you draw the shapes, you can extrude them out. So it kind of works a little bit like uh, uh, Sketch, uh, Google Sketch, Google, oh, what is that program called? You know which one I'm talking about, the uh, the CAD program that Google bought for a while. Um, that Sketch, SketchCAD, I think it's called. Uh, this kind of has the same basic workflow. Very, very simple 3D creation, uh, but a fun little tool to check out and use. Again, it is in the browser, so it is Bloom. Uh, the link will be in the linked article once again. Another one in the browser is Spline. So this is a place for doing collaborative 3D work. I did a hands-on with it as well. It's cool for making these little um, Vista-type setups. It's, again, a 3D modeler uh, in the cloud, uh, it's relatively simple, uh, but it, it's also pretty easy to use, and it has basic sculpting tools in it as well. Um, so this one is improving with time. Uh, there is a completely free version of it available, so free here, here, and here, whereas the super removes some of the uh, limitations and gives you some extra export uh, options here, uh, such as GLTF with textures, and then some for 3D printing. Uh, so there is a full functional 3D version that does have export out. So if you wanna go ahead and check that one out, uh, that is Spline. Uh, next up, we have Daz. 
I was kind of hesitant to put Daz on here. Uh, and Daz has a companion program that's really old, a 3D polygonal modeling tool called Hexagon. I didn't bother covering Hexagon because it just seems to be so out of date right now. Same as Wings 3D I didn't make this list. So if you're wondering where's Wings, it's just, it's gotten so old at this point. Whereas Daz is a free 3D modeling tool. Um, it's like a poser, uh, but free. And the whole idea is they want you to buy their 3D models. They give away a number for free. One of those things to be aware of, though, if you do check out and sign up for Daz, they will spam the crap out of whatever email address you give them. Uh, but it is a powerful tool for if you want to create um, face renderings, 3D creatures, 3D characters, and so on. And it is free, but you are going to be buying the, um, the models and such that work with it. So it's kind of on the verge. It's free-ish. Um, next up, we got Vroid Studio. Now, this is kind of like Daz for anime characters. And completely free. Uh, you can make uh, 3D animated characters with sets of faces, eyes, body types, and so on. Uh, you can now do male and female. Uh, it's a cool program for sure. I've checked it out a couple of times, uh, as long as you are down with that whole anime styling. Uh, it does ship, it does export into a somewhat unconventional file format. I forget the exact name of the format. Uh, it's V-Form or something. It's got this uh, vermal um, VR avatar format that it exports out in, but there are tools to get that tool working in whatever kind of uh, third-party tool you want. I did a video on uh, Vroid to uh, Blender, I think it was. Vroid is a really cool tool if you like anime. If you don't like anime, there's nothing to see here, folks. Move along. Speaking of moving along, now we're getting into some of the animation tools that are out there. The daddy of them all is Mixamo. Now, Adobe bought Mixamo like seven years ago, and everybody's been waiting for them to kill it, and so far they haven't. So uh, it is this great tool for uh, applying animations to rigged characters. You can upload your own models and have them rigged. They also have their own models available. They made them all available for free, as long as all the animations for free. Uh, assuming you have signed in. I don't know if they're all free forever for everybody, but again, it's Adobe, and we're all waiting for the shoe to drop, but it has been many years now, and the shoe hasn't dropped yet. So this is really one of the best animation tools out there, especially if you have a lack of animations capabilities. Now, it does have a competitor, though. I recently did a video on this one, and it is called Accurig. Um, so this one is uh, very cool, to be honest. It's a free tool for creating your own rigs, 3D models. Uh, they also have their own animation library to go with it, but you do not need to use them. Um, it can actually do alternate poses too, which is actually kind of nice. So characters don't all have to be in the T pose to make it work. In fact, it can actually rig people that are like in completely nonsensical poses. Uh, like there's an image at one point or one of their previews where they had it up in... Um, a, a lady holding a baby and they managed to, to actually create a rig in that model. It's one of the easiest to um, available rig creators out there. So if you hate rigging, uh, Actor Core is definitely one of those things to check out and it exports out to their iClone format, which is a real illusion. Real illusion make this, by the way. Uh, they make uh, Creature Creator and iClone, etc. They support all of their stuff as well, obviously. But you can see here most other applications and game engines are also supported as well. And it is free. Of course, they do have their own animations that they want to sell you, uh, as that's where they're making their money on this one. And this one is not technically free, uh, but there is a free version of it, and the free version of it allows you to export up to 160 seconds or something like that worth of animation. So as long as your animations aren't super long, uh, you can create them, or sorry, uh, it's frames. That There's a limit to the number of frames you can update. So like 200 frames or something to that effect. So you can actually check it out for free. It's limited to under 100k revenue though, but I still think it fits on this particular list. Um, it is a very cool animation tool. Basically it uses machine learning and other aspects to kind of fill in the blanks between your cane. So you kind of do your animation traditionally, but it kind of can take some hand guides from what you're doing and update the animations accordingly. I know I'm not doing it justice to describe how Cascador works, uh, but I have done a couple of videos that show you how to use Cascador and the cool things it does for you. Plus it also has an easy rigging tool in it. Um, but again, it can do, so like as you move, see how it's doing the supplemental animations for you, all that secondary animation? So you do the initial, and then it kind of 
figures out what that movement would do and does the secondary motions as well. Uh, it's a really cool tool that makes you look like a better animator than you really are. And the free version uh, is fully functional with some limitations and of course that revenue limitation. Next up, we're getting into the world of like substance painter, substance designer type tools for making 3D textures. And one of the coolest ones out there, I've covered it many times on the channel, I will cover it many more times on the channel, is a program called Material Maker. It's a procedural materials authoring tool built on top of the Godot game engine. Uh, you can use it to create uh, just about any kind of um, texture maps uh, using a 3D workflow. It also has its own library now built in of materials and textures that you can grab. Uh, and it's got um, like a 3D painting aspect, kind of like Substance Painter in a very nascent or early form. But uh, Material Maker is definitely one of those tools you want to have on your radar. Another one to be aware of is Armor Paint. Now, Armor Paint has a price tag attached to it, but if you're willing to build it yourself from code, you can use it for free. And it's the closest thing to a free slash cheap substance painter as exists. Uh, they have their own library of stuff as well. Uh, you even have live link into uh, Unreal Engine and Unity plugins, so you can see your textures on the fly, whether painted onto your 3D objects inside of your game world. Uh, it runs across multiple different platforms. Uh, it's even on iPad OS, although so my experience with it was pretty buggy at the time. Hopefully that's improved over time. Uh, but again, if you build this from code yourself, you can get it uh, for free. I don't know how they changed how that works now. Uh, I'm not 100% certain if they've made any changes to the way that the pricing works, but the price of it also was quite cheap. Um, so all updates are included for free. Anyways, definitely Armor Paint is one of those check out. If the name and the logo look familiar, it's actually the same guy that made the Armory engine, which is a hacks powered game engine that runs inside of Blender. And development for that is still ongoing, although this does seem to be his focus now. So Armor Paint, uh, again, was at least available for free if you built it from code yourself, or it's available for pretty cheap. Uh, and then next up we have Node Toy. Uh, this is for creating shader graphs. Um, yeah, it's... That's really kind of it. It's built on top of 3JS. Uh, it's visual editor for creating shaders, again, using uh, these visual graphs, and you actually have a preview of what you're working on. Uh, both Unity and Unreal Engine have something like this built in. The end result, I think, is GLSL, but it's possibly HLSL as well, and it runs entirely in your browser. And then finally, we have the Game Texture Viewer. Uh, this is just a, a simple tool for viewing your game textures. It's got... Um, you know, GPU accelerated, you can go through thousands of assets. So if you've got a huge collection of textures sitting on your system, uh, this one is one you want to check out. This is actually from the same people that make Ember Gen, uh, but it is a completely free texture viewer. Uh, is it Windows only? No, uh, for Windows, Linux, and, oh no, sorry, just Windows. Sorry, I saw them here and I figured they were available, but no, sorry, Windows only. Uh, but it is a portable application, so there's no install required. You literally just run it and you're good to go. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a number of free or free-ish or mostly free or available somewhat free 3D applications out there. And you know what? Using this combination of tools, you can easily create just about anything you could dream of in 3D. We live in blessed times. Now, obviously, I probably did not get everything. If you have additional recommendations, please do let me know them in the comments down below. And maybe in a future rendition of this video, I will get those as well. Or if it's something new to me, maybe I'll cover it in its own video. And once again, I have all these things in a linked article down below. So if I have covered them, I will have a link to the previous video so you can learn more about anything we talked about today. All right, let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.